Circle theorem questions not only involve finding missing angles, but also will often ask you to provide a reason and the wording for the reason will be very critical in terms of the mark scheme uh, that the examiners mark against. Um, and in this question, it's a good example where there's only one mark for the reason. So you've got to be really precise in, in what you actually present. In this question, we're told that A, B, C and D are points on a circle, which has a centre of O, and E, B, F is a tangent to the circle at point B. Diagram is not to scale, so do not take any readings off the diagram. Uh, if you do, they will definitely be wrong, uh, and you won't score any marks. Uh, in part A, it says work out the size of angle DCB. DCB is this angle here. This is quite an easy one to start with because what you actually have here is a cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C, D. By definition from the question, being points on the circle, it's a cyclic quadrilateral. And the angles, the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral will add up to 180. So to work out the size, we just do 180, subtract the 40 degrees at the top, which equals 140 degrees. This angle and this angle must make 180. The reason, well, you need to state it. And what you would need to say is something like this, that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. The key words of these, the key phrases, you must have opposite angles and you must have cyclic quadrilateral. Cyclical is not a word that we would use here, so you cannot use cyclical. So make sure you have the proper phrase and make sure you learn all the key words here. This one is opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. Now in the second part of the question, it asks us to work out the size of angle ADO. ADO is this angle here. I'm going to mark it in blue. That's the angle that I'm trying to find. There are several ways of, of coming up with a solution here. Um, Hopefully this one that I show will kind of make sense. Um, we have a tangent at point B. So that means that this angle is 90 degrees. So I'm going to mark that on. This angle is 90. And if part of that angle is 66, the other part is going to be 90 minus 66. So that angle there, let's just draw a little arrow. This is going to be 90 minus 66, which equals 24 degrees. So that's the angle in here. Now, I've wrote on from the first part, 140 degrees is the angle at DCB. You can see that there. And basically what we can say is, is that the angle here, DOB, the obtuse angle there is going to be um, double this angle here. Remember, the angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference. So this angle here is going to be 140 multiplied by 2, which is 280 degrees. It's the reflex or the obtuse angle there. Now, why have I done that? Well. What we can actually look at now is that we have a quadrilateral, not a cyclic quadrilateral, but just a quadrilateral. And I know three angles. And in a quadrilateral, the angles will always add up to 360. So my missing blue angle here will be 360. Subtract my 40 degrees at the top my 24 degrees that I worked out first, and my 280 degrees that I worked out second. And when I do 360, take away those three angles, I am left with an angle of 16 degrees. So this angle here is 16 
degrees. Now luckily with this second part, it does not ask for any reasons. It just says work out. And in fact, when you look at the mark scheme, if you just put 16, you get the full marks. It is assumed you've done it correctly. But what I would recommend is that you write on the angles that you know, write the calculations as well as the angles you've um, discovered as you go around um, and present it similar to what we've got here so you can show the examiner very clearly this is how I calculated each of the angles.